Okay, uh, so let's get started. So uh, this is going to be one of the case studies which will which are which we are going to do, and uh, today we are going to cover URL shortener as such. I know it's a very common question. Probably everybody would have come across this, but the reason for choosing this question is uh, it has a different nuance to it, right? Like there are uh, some problems which are heavy on the tech side. For example, uh, things like uh, WhatsApp chat or Twitter or something like this. Uh, this is heavy on the tech side, but it's also heavy on the other side, which is like one part of the interview, which is uh, estimations, like capacity estimations and stuff like that, right? Which is also called uh, back of the envelope calculation. So it's an interesting problem to actually cover that area, I would say. Probably everything else might not be that complex, or I think it's fair, compl fairly complex, but yeah. It has all the other, uh, like it has the other side of nuances, which you would probably not find in a lot of different questions itself, right? So uh, let's try to go through this. And because I know a lot of people have already been, would have been familiar with this. So I'll want to keep this more interactive. So I'll uh, want you guys to pitch in and wherever possible prompt stuff. So it's not me who's doing this, but I would rather follow this up and uh, we'll probably see uh, how it goes and then. We'll, we'll see, uh, like we'll basically try to drive this as a discussion rather than uh, like a problem solving kind of stuff, right? So, okay. So uh, what is a UL shortener, right? So can somebody, does somebody want to talk about this? Like, uh, do you guys know, is that, I think everybody will be familiar with the popular yeah. UL, tiny yeah. UL. <clears throat> like it helps to shorten a big URL to something easily memorable or easily shareable. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we can think of this that there's a big URL, something like, uh, one second, uh, let's think of something like, uh, something like XYZ, like I'm leaving the HTTP part of it, like basically HTTP, HTTP. Let me write it down properly. Something like this, right? Uh, Slash some, I'll just give some example. Slash, I'm, I'm just writing random stuff. So please, I mean, there might not be much meaning of this. And some weird blah, blah. There's something like this, right? So this might be like one of the URLs, which is basically dealing with you, right? So there's some details around you and stuff like that, right? And if you want to encode this on, this is hard to remember. And this is uh, like generally people don't want to paste these kinds of stuff over the internet, right? So you would want something which is more, uh, I would say readable and stuff like that. So we can generate something like this out of this, right? Uh, tiny URL dot com slash a b c x y z like you can generate something like this for this and this is more readable this uh, i mean this is something which you would want to paste on if you want to have links on some files and stuff like that right so mostly people use uh url shortener to uh like basically shorten the url itself the first thing is to make it like a bit shorter so if you make this a uh, bit shorter, it becomes a bit more readable. Uh, sometimes uh, also be like people want to hide some details. So there might be some query patterns which has things like a plate ID or something like this, which you would not want to directly share with uh, the person who's interacting with, right? So in, like there might be a case where you're trying to, like you're searching some link uh, where somebody's buying some stuff from an e-commerce website. And in that case, uh, if there's an affiliate kick in what, which comes in, there's, there would be something like an affiliate ID or something like this on the link itself, right? Uh, so people would not want it to expose directly so that I mean, it gives you a different feeling, right? Somebody's trying to gain out of you or something like this, right? So people then try to like hide all of those and stuff, right? So but you don't want the query patterns uh, mostly to be visible on the other side, or you don't want them to directly look at a URL and see what the query pattern is. It will try to like encode this into a tiny URL or like small uh, URL shop. It is short URL and use it itself, right? There might be other use cases also. So 
if you can think of this is also that if you want to gather a uh, static stats around like who is using this url uh, like some some aggregation on who clicked it and from where it is getting clicked and stuff like that you can also do this uh, through this right so basically when you construct a tiny url uh, like or a small a, a short url itself right? you can gain uh, like you can have some analytics built in into it so when uh, like somebody clicks on it you can have things like who the user agent is playing and what is the ip address uh, based on that like you can get gather some information and stuff like that right and then it can be like different stuff also uh, there are more uh, like if like you basically would get a lot of uh, user head information like uh, agent uh, like is it an ios android app or is it like a website chrome versions browsers and all of those kinds of stuff so they help you understand uh, like something about who the user is uh, is as well as ip addresses can be used to trace uh, not trace i would say but actually pinpoint into some direction right for example is a user from uh, us or is it from india or is it from europe and stuff like that looking at the ip address you would be able to somewhat figure out uh, there are people who use uh, like vpns and stuff like that which becomes like it's not always reliable this data but i would say more or less you would get some just out of it this right and then if you know about this then you can use it into your advantage right for example suppose uh, you are somebody uh, who like is exposing uh, something like a video or something like a uh, article or something like this right you share your blog link or something like this right now like if you get to know about like how many people have clicked on this and from where they have clicked and you know the geographical region itself right you probably don't need to know the exact like lat long and stuff like that but if you get a like regional information and things like that it helps you understand uh, like at least where your audience is right so if more people are click clicking in us you probably want to optimize the next time when you try to generate some uh, content probably you would want to keep that in mind that uh, it should be more focused on uh, that particular geographical region and stuff like that okay so that's the reason why uh, people use url short uh, is this okay like is it, is like is the understanding clear why would somebody want to shorten the url okay so let's uh, move ahead now let's go into that mode where uh, we like assume that this is a question being asked to you in an interview right so what steps would you follow itself right so anybody who wants to prompt about what would be the next step anybody uh, like uh, mm -hmm. first of all we should try to find out the exact requirements uh, like what features it should support mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, functional and non-functional requirements for spiritual kind of exactly. So, let's try to do this, right? We have uh, we have requirements, and let's focus on the functional requirement bit. So, can somebody tell me what would be the functional requirement for this particular use case? I'm thinking of today doing something which is much different because there's a small crowd itself. I'm thinking of naming people now. So we need to identify uh, the shortest URL to send to the customer. Yeah. So you, you can think of this, right? So like the first requirement would be given a uh, like a norm original URL. You would convert it into a short URL, right? Right. That's the first requirement itself, right? Uh, in this, probably you would want to have another feature. Where you would want them to allow custom URL, right? So they can basically choose to say that okay, I want this URL to be named like this, right? So you can say that uh, you can support aliases, right? Or you can say custom URLs, right? So you probably the URL itself would not be custom, but the part where uh, you have that like short link, right? Suppose you are using six characters or seven characters, whatever it is, right? You you can basically take it as an input itself. Okay, is that okay? Okay. The third part would be uh, things like I mean the basic functionality would be that uh, once you get a short URL, that short URL should be redirected to the original URL itself, right? So I would say redirection. of short url to original url 
Okay. What is this third requirement? Uh, redirection. So, Anil, uh, basically, uh, like, how does how does a short URL actually work? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So when someone, okay, okay, got it. Got so if it. you call the short URL itself, you are basically redirected to the original URL, right? So that's oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know it's a basic, I mean, it's something which you already know about this, but like while writing down, probably you need to write this down so that, I mean, uh, later on it, it, it would be useful, right? So that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. Now the fourth thing would be, uh, I would say it should support expiry. So support expiration for short URLs. Okay. Anything else? Any anything else somebody uh, like wants to like fill in if there should be something else? Or anything else which comes to your mind, right? Let's just feel free to talk about this, right? There might be other requirements which you will which which we uh, so while discussing this part of the interview, right? It's okay to not think about whether this is useful or not useful. But if you feel, feel that this is something which you would like to have a feature, probably it's not, it might not even be a priority feature or requirement, but you would want to discuss this with the interviewer, right? Why? Uh, because it tells you the breadth of your understanding. Probably out of the 10 features which we have, we will probably only pick three or four, but you should always be uh, like prompting all of those. Like if you, if you can think of three, four, five, ten, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and talk about this. Let, let it up to, let it, uh, this be up to the interviewer that they can choose like, okay, let's do only three of these or let's do only one, two, and three, right? But basically you should not think about this at this point of time, right? So anything else you can think of? For example, uh, uh, any customer you want to pay, uh, some link they will provide, for example, I'm booking something, so the URL you provided, you can use this to uh, pay the amount. So like that, we have the different user ID should be, um, I mean the customer also available. So is there any algorithm we need to build on this function requirement for each customer should be the different URLs? Yeah, so, the... yeah, interesting. I would say that's interesting in some way. Uh, like, okay, let's let's try to think about this, how, uh, how would we do this? So, if, and I'm saying if, uh, it's like the URL itself has some probably query parameters, right? So if you're passing in user ID or something, I, I know probably people would not want to pass your query IDs, uh, like sorry, your user IDs in query, but uh, you can do that, right? In, in some sense. So so th there are two problems, right? Uh, when you're shorting a URL, you can only concentrate on the URL, right? You cannot concentrate on request body and stuff like that. Agreed? Because, I mean, you would not pass in a, a body body per se, right? Or while redirection, you can only get the URL right itself. So you can only shorten the URL with the information which is there in the URL itself, right? So if, and I, I'm like, if you're okay with having URL, uh, sorry, user IDs in the URL, then probably I would say that you don't need to support anything custom. But I mean, that depends on whether that might be a security issue or not, right? So I'll probably say, mm, I understand your requirement, but I'm not really sure that in this case, probably it fits in well, I would say. If on the other side, uh, you have proper authentication where even if you pass user ID in the query parents, you are doing some kind of authentication or something like this to basically serve it URL or like give the response for the URL, then probably it's fine, right? But I, mean, I don't know. That depends on how you're going to play it, right? So I would say, uh, if you want to do something custom, or if you want to do, I, I add some identity stuff like that. If you are if you are okay with passing this into uh, passing it as a query parent, I don't think so. You need to do anything custom. Does it make sense, Avinkitesh? Yeah. Okay. So uh, and and, uh, and I did like how many uh, is there uh, any restriction on number of URLs which can be shortened by a user or are we giving that flexibility of different accounts supporting different number of uh, URL shortness? Yeah, yeah. Good question. I think, uh, can we uh, like, can we consider this as uh, functional or non-functional? I mean, so we can do that, right? So 
there uh, and this is also something which you'll have to basically if this is a question then you'll have to uh, talk to your interview about right so like while somebody is coming to your platform to basically shorten a url does the user need a login or do you support it like for anybody can do it so can i go to your uh, app and just go ahead and give a url and just get a shortened url out of this or would i be needed to log in and then do it because anytime you want to do stuff like where you want to restrict based on user you would have to bring in the user identity right so you will have to maintain some form of uh, user information there and then you can do stuff like that right so uh, i would say probably possible at this point of time we can discuss this whether uh, anybody would be able to do this or you didn't need to have a login right so i would say you can add another requirement saying that uh, something like uh, user needs to sorry to log in to or shorten urls yeah we can say this right and uh, like are we going to derive some analytics based on this user data exactly so we can say uh, analytics around uh, usage of short url right right okay now uh, i think this is okay for the functional uh, requirements Do you, can you think of more in, uh, any more functional requirements okay now let's move into the non functional requirements somebody wants to take a shot at this i get there <laughs> one more thing i wanted to ask you uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether it's a requirement or we should uh, basically find out this. Like suppose uh, same uh, website, same URL, two people are trying to sort it. And so whether uh, we should use the same URL or whether you should generate uh, shortener different URLs for the same long URL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say that depends a bit Right. That depends on how you're defining your service, I would say. Right. So if you think about this, uh, if you are doing something like, uh, you have this functionality, right. Where users, you, you are not, you're not basically exposing everything as a public. You have a, uh, you have a notion of user in your system. Then probably you would want to have like different URLs, for, like probably the short URL will differ even if multiple users face the same thing. For the same you say for the same user probably you will be okay with doing the same thing but for multiple people you would probably want to do it differently right because they yeah. have different expiration time and stuff like that right because it's local to you it's not publicly to you right so i would say if you're bringing in a notion of user then probably you would want to keep the short urls different if not then it's kind of okay but i would say like yeah you have to take a call right so the problem would be with this part right the expiration part so how do you handle this let's take a case so suppose you have shortened it, you have shortened the same URL, I have shortened the same URL, youtube.com. Okay, for some reason we're doing this. Uh, now what happens is, I said like, okay, sorry, English. Uh, I said that I just wanted it for seven days. And then uh, I did, like I was the first person to do this and then I kept the expiration as seven days. Seven days. Now you come back and you also want to do this and you say like my expiration is probably a year. Now what happens is after seven days, I mean, how do I take a call? Like in the DB, if I'm referring to this, should I increase it to the one which you have, or should I do something like whichever is longer, should I go ahead and like update that expiration time in that DB? The problem would be if you do something like this, right? Uh, for me, the expedition is after seven days, it will stop working. But will that short link stop working if, if I change the expiration days? No, right? So. I think there's a there's a use case in which you can you'll have to think about the nuances about this. So I would say probably like I would say it's okay to have different uh, URLs. It's a form of optimization which you're thinking of, but I think there are going to be side effects around that, right? So yeah. Okay. So the, uh, let's talk about the non-functional requirements. 
I'll just quickly uh, write it down. Or if somebody wants to like, just take one minute. Like, somebody wants to prompt it out. Uh, Non-functional requirement. Uh, so I think like this should be highly available and latency should be less. Yeah. So I would say available. Uh, like HA, let me, so I think uh, you should always use the term HA for uh, highly available. I think that's something which people use it. But yeah, it just means highly available. The next thing would be mm, low latency. So basically the redirection should happen in some few milliseconds, right? So we'll, we'll want to have the SLA as few milliseconds. The third thing would be, I would say, uh, you can think of this as uh, like something which you would want to have is like, it should not be guessable that, right? The short URL should not be guessable. So short URL should not be, and I'll, I'll tell, uh, tell you how it's gonna like tie up to the algorithm which we use, right? Okay. So we've covered the function and the non-functional requirement, but uh, any questions on this? Any doubts, anything? Okay. Uh, so uh, hmm. for example, uh, I am I am using a one vendor. I need for uh, my application should be uh, short on URL while sending to the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my domain should be registered in somewhere, the domain CNS, CD, uh, the domains. Yeah. So here, every time they given my request sent to the, uh, this application, the certain URL, they given to the some sort of uh, URL to the customer. From that uh, response, I'm sending to the customer. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, we need to do any, uh, I mean, to the domain should be modified or something like that, a bit confusing on that. Mm, okay, so I did not understand the whole stuff which you're talking about. So, is it like you're saying that if you if you want to give the same URL to multiple customers, do you want you want some changes in the like URL itself, or like can you can you explain the use case? No, oh, for example, uh, uh, I am using some Amazon or something that application. Mm -hmm. So I ordered something. In, okay, uh, for example, some product I ordered in between some network delayed so it, it connection went off okay so the same where the customer left the page uh, for example i can send that uh, link to the customer here you can continue your order mm -hmm. so instead of the entire uh, thing that should be the shorter url sent to the customer via mail yeah so yeah. here uh, my question is that uh, the shorter url should be mapped to with my domain no uh, www.amazon yeah, yeah, so it, it's always gonna be like like this, right? So uh, when you say URL, the URL is like all the stuff, right? So if you remember, we had a discussion on how a URL looks like. There's the HTTP, which is a scheme, right? And then you have the domain name, which is www.amazon.com or uh, orders.amazon.com. And then you have the other like uh, paths, which will have resource names and stuff like that, right? So when you're shorting this URL, you're, you're shorting the whole stuff. Right, you're basically shortening from like HTTP. So it always it also contains the information like whether you're using HTTP or HTTPS. I mean, most people would use HTTPS anyways, but like it contains all the information itself, right? So it has everything I would say. So domain name would be included in that URL itself, right? So if it when you say URL, you mean the whole URL, right? I mean, uh, it's like from HTTPS to the whole stuff, right? Uh, if you take an example, something like this, right? So this is gonna be your whole URL, right? So it will have a domain, right? Yeah, got uh, is it, uh, so the third point should be the meet after giving the URL to then it redirect to the original. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so got it. Uh, sorry. Yeah, okay, okay, no worries. Yeah. So, uh, okay, uh, so I think we can move ahead. Uh, the next step would be to do some form of capacity estimation, right? And we're gonna also always remember this, that while doing capacity estimation, it's about approximations. It's not about exact numbers. Uh, like few bytes here and there, or few GBs here and there is gonna be fine. You just need to understand the order of stuff, which is which means like 
is it like are you taking an assumption where uh, that assumption is off by some thousands or something like this if that's the case then probably you are in uh, like you probably have like you not be able to like design a system up to that scale itself right otherwise it's fine you, you i mean you, you should not think about like whether i i should use 500 bytes to store this data or 600 bytes to store this data unless it's 500 bytes to like 3 mb like if if that's the difference in your assumptions or if your assumption is off by uh that margin then probably you are going to have like problems here if you say like okay 500 uh, bytes uh, to store the data versus 700 or 800 bytes to store the data more or less you're not going to be in trouble as such right so you're more, more or less going to be in the same order itself so that's completely fine so it's all about approximations okay so in uh, when you do capacity estimation what we need to understand this is what are the resources which i'm going to use to build out this system so it think of things like uh, uh, what is the request per second what is the response per second like uh, in terms of reads and writes mostly read write modify modify is happening you can think of this in those forms uh, like the other would be uh, i would say storage capacity so how much data would you store like uh, if you want to like storage in db storage in cache something like this right uh, the other would be network bandwidth so how many uh, how much of uh, network bandwidth are you using at any point of time and then uh, you can also have things like uh, like request per second response per second which basically helps you to understand uh, like what is the scale of your system itself right okay so while doing capacity estimation uh, you need to and in this kind of system uh, the first thing which you need to do is understand uh, like what kind of system it is right so is it a read heavy system or a write heavy system so anybody wants to talk about like whether ul ul shortener is a read heavy system or a write heavy system read heavy right so uh, if i want to calculate a reads to write ratio i could do something like this right i, I mean and this is also like some something which you are uh, basically saying that uh, approximations right so this might not be the exact number but we can think of something like this right so the reads would be 100 and the writes would be 1 so you basically write a url one time and you read it 100 times something like that right on the on the same order it's right is this okay okay so the moment you understand this that this is a read heavy system right let me write this down it's a read heavy system now you would get your in your head that what are the things which we would need to account for to build a system out i would say one thing would be like dvs what sort of dbs uh, db i would want to use and the other thing would be cache probably we'll discuss this later but at this point of time i'm thinking about this and i'm keeping in in my head right so at this point i'm making these things clear that i would have to think about what dbs i would support and because it's a read heavy system i know what kind of dbs are more suited for this and at the same point of time i would also be thinking about caches because it's a read system lowering the latency uh, probably using a cache would be used okay now let's take some assumptions for uh, how many okay what the hell did i reach the end of this page oh uh, i'm been struggling with using new new uh, <laughs> this these apps or whiteboard add it app itself right so don't worry i'll, I'll probably figure this out okay anyways so now what you're trying to say is uh, what is the traffic overall uh, like or the read traffic uh, per month so let's have some assumption right so suppose your website is quite popular something like uh, bitly or uh, pastebin or something like this right so i would say the traffic and this is read traffic right so reads i would say suppose it is something on the order 500 million per month i'll use capital n for this so okay how do you get to do this uh, most of the times you would ask the interviewer itself like most of the time the interviewer will prompt out okay we are looking at something like this and then you will throw out a huge number because that's where the interest interesting stuff comes in right sorry uh, so i'm sorry i'm just missed this out click traffic would be rights right so 
mostly we can think of this as 500 million new urls per uh, month that's the right which is happening so you are basically handling new uh, like 500 new urls per month so, so people are coming in and uh, like adding new new urls etc right? let me do this let me try to draw a line and then probably go back okay again let me write this out rights are 500 million per month right so reads would be like if you remember we took the reads as a something close to this right so it was a few times right? 500 into 10 would be 10 millions would be my reads right okay now if you want to bring this down to some uh, number uh, per second or something like this we can think of the, doing this right so so this is 500 million. If you divide it by something like 30 days, right? 30 days uh, into 24 hours into mm, mm, 3600 seconds, right? Okay. I mean, uh, if you look at the whole calculation, the calculation comes out to be close to something like 200 URLs per second. Okay. I mean, you can try this uh, calculations. This calculations probably you can just do like it, like for the below, you can keep 10 to the power three, and then you can just do the multiplication and stuff like that. But it it's going to come close to this, right? You can try it out. It it more or less would be near to this, right? So okay. Uh, the rights are 200 watts per second. So the reads would be uh, 200 into like we had this, right? So, sorry, we had 100 right there. So, sorry. Okay. Reads were 500, like into 100, right? So, we were saying that the reads and write ratio is 100 times, like the reads are 100 times more than uh, writes. So, if the reads are uh, 200 uh, URLs per second, so 200 into 10 to the power 2, so into 100 is what is going to be your uh, reads, right? So, it's going to be something like 20 into 10 to the power three, right? URLs per second, which is basically like 20 K. Is this clear? Any doubts here? No, right? So let's move on. Uh, so these were uh, my URL per second or request uh, ordering, right? Now let's go into storage. Wait. I I know that at this point in time we have not talked about like uh what are the fields going to be in the DB and stuff like that. Like so basically storage would, would vary. But at this point of time, if you take a basic assumption saying that uh if we for one record, right? Or, or let's think about this. I record if I'm using a user, uh, so I would have something like a user ID. I would have a big URL, like with a long URL. I would have a short URL. I would have an expiration date, right? That is that is what it is going to have, right? So there are four fields and stuff like that. So can I think of this and say like it will take approximately five minute bytes? We're not doing the exact calculation, but we're just keeping it in order. So it's it's better uh, if you are like close to that calculation but i think in this case it, it's going to be close to 500 bytes itself right if i look at the string what would be the length of the string and stuff like that uh, i think four bytes is what you use for user ids and stuff like that if you have numerical user ids and stuff so i think we'll just keep 500 bytes for a time being. okay we'll assume this to be 500 bytes itself right so uh, and uh, the other thing which we'll do is uh, we'll think of uh, what is the maximum time when I, I would persist a URL into my DB? So I would say uh, something like, uh, say expiration time max. Expiration time. Okay. So I would say this to be like five years. So nobody would be able to give me an expiration time which is more than five years for a time. Right? So, and I'm making this assumption. You can basically ask this from the interviewer itself they would give you uh, those uh, assumptions itself. Like right? if there's something wrong with the assumption, they will tell you. So you can prompt out saying that I'm thinking of the max expiry time to be being like five years. 
but uh, like do you think this is right or wrong or do you think we should do something else and they would probably tell you about it it's okay okay so this is 5 years so now let us try to think of how many records or how many urls it is going to have right so we had 500 million right uh, in one month into uh, we, we like uh, how many records we have 5 years into 12 months right is okay so this is 5 years into 12 months right so i'm i'm basically saying over the span of 5 years what is the number of urls which i'm storing right so this is going to come into 500 into 60 right i'm going to say million which is 5 6 is 30 8 and 10 to the power 3 right into 10 to the power 3 million so i can say 30 billion right For uh, like thirteen billion URLs, I would say. Like, this is the this is the number of URLs which I need to store over the span of five years. Is this okay? Okay. Now, this is one URL, right? Like thirty billion URLs I am storing. If I am talking in terms of what is the storage used uh, for one URL, I am using five hundred bytes. So I can do something like this, right? Thirty like billion into five hundred bytes. Like five hundred. I mean, I'm just keeping. This is billion, so I'll keep it B, and this is bytes. Right. So this would be five three to fifteen. Uh, and then you have ten to part three, right? So it's basically billion into bytes. It's like uh, sorry, fifteen uh TV, right? So it's billion and into bytes, like yeah, it would be fifteen terabytes, right? so this is the total capacity which is needed to store like all the urls in the db like all, all the records in the db itself assuming that you're taking 500 bytes to store one url is this okay okay and uh, this 500 million is per month yeah yeah so if if we go back like we we had this estimate right Permanent, okay. right? Okay. So we are building on top of this, basically. So the numbers can differ. I'm just trying to give you something. Like uh, somebody can say 100 million, somebody can say 50 million, and stuff like that, right? So how do you do the capacity estimation? Is the problem. And I mean, instead of like, think of this like you would have some different question altogether. But this is the way you will approach this. First, you will try to get the request per second, like basically. uh throughput i would say in some regards throughput uh, in terms of request then you will look at storage and for storage you would like say that okay one record requires this much thing uh, i'm going to retain for some this much time so in this case because it is getting expired you you can say that this is going to be the max storage which i'll do in some other cases where you will not expire stuff probably you will say this is growing at a rate of something like this right so you'll have to make uh, those uh, assumptions and things like that right so so i'll just try to like summarize what we are doing so we we'll say new urls per month urls per month is 500 million okay and then uh, we are assuming uh, that we'll store it so total i'll say time is equal to 5 years uh one url we are taking around Sorry, wow. We are taking around five hundred bytes. Let's say approximation by five hundred bytes. Uh, total URLs. We can say this to be uh thirty billion, right? So we say thirty billion, and then total storage is fifteen TB. Okay, this is fine. Okay, now again. So now moving ahead, like now let's get, try to calculate. Why is it moving? Now let's try to calculate the bandwidth use, which is going to be used. So we'll say network bandwidth or bandwidth.
Okay. So there are reads and writes, right? So writes would be uh, 500 bytes, right? So 500 bytes uh, into uh, no, uh, what was the mm, 200 URLs, right? Per second. So I, I can say 500 bytes into 200 would be my bytes per second, right? That would be the data which is transferred in the wire into bytes per second, right? So I could say, uh, mm, I would say something like this, right? So 200 URLs per second. So this equal to 500 into the like, uh, it's five to the 10, one, two, three, four. So it's 100 into 10 to the power three, which is like 100 kilobytes per second, right? So this is something like, this is my incoming bandwidth, right? Is this clear? So, so there are uh, there are going to be uh, the bandwidth which is used is incoming and outgoing. So incoming is if you're writing uh, like two hundred URLs per second, then it's basically like two hundred URLs into like one URL size which is five hundred bytes. So that's it. Uh, that's the bandwidth which you you want to use per second, right? So it's going to be hundred kbps. Basically, hundred kbps is the uh, kbps per second is what you are using as an incoming bandwidth itself, right? The same thing we would have for outgoing. So you can see, yeah. One doubt I have like uh, network bandwidth is like uh, what we are, how much data we are transmitting over the network. Right? Yes. But we, while we are, while yeah. transmitting this right, we have taken 500 bytes, which is the uh, space to store a record in the table. Yeah. Not yeah. the, not the URL uh, uh, length, so uh, like so that's a bit confusing for me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I would say look at this as approximate numbers. Probably you'll have something less. Sorry, uh, in this write case, probably you'll have the same numbers, right? So if you think about it, uh, in writes, uh, somebody is gonna give you uh, like all the details, right? Which I'm gonna store in the DB. Probably up ex except the sort URL itself, you'll have all the details, uh, all the extra details, right? Most of the time you'll have expiration date, you'll have a user ID, so you'll understand, like you would get something on the, in the user ID terms, right? Probably you might not get a user ID, but you'll get a token in the request or something like this, right? So I'm just saying is, this is not exact to be honest, but th this these are the numbers which you can expect to be there. It might be that, uh, it, it might be a bit less, I would say, or it, more or less, because you're using DCP, you will have uh, other stuff also coming in and stuff like that, right? So this is not to have the exact number itself, but just to like using that same assumption which you have, right? Because you're talking about assumptions here, we can say that this is gonna be like somewhat close to it, right? Are you worried about 10 Mbps, uh, sorry, uh, 10, uh, 100 Kbps to 50 Kbps or 500 Kbps? I would say no, that is not gonna like impact your decision itself. But what we're trying to do is, you're trying to talk about that this is the uh, like this is the behavior of our my system which I'm trying to build. Okay, Asha, is that clear? So these numbers are not going to be exact, right? I'm going to be very honest. This is these numbers are not going to be exact. In fact, I'm use I'll use the same number while saying like uh, like when the reads uh, when the reads happen, which is not going to be true because in reads you're just going to return a URL, which is a short URL itself, right? So it will in, definitely have like less than that. But do you need to care about it too much? I would say no, because you're just trying to get the order of the system. Saying that, okay, I'm using 10, uh, like 100 kbps to incoming, and I'm using probably something like uh, two mbps for outgoing and stuff like that, right? So that's what you need to do. You, you don't need to come up with the exact number itself. Okay? Okay, so the reads would be uh, like 200k, if you remember, uh, it was 500, like, the number of reads were high, right? So it, it's 200K uh, into, let's at this point of time also assume 500 bytes and but I'm just saying that this is not gonna be true. Probably you'll have much lesser than this. But if you do this calculation, it is like uh, 10, uh, five to the, two, five to the 10, one to three, like 10 to the power three. So K, this is K and this is bytes. So it would be like for a timing, let's keep as KBPS, but uh, this is gonna come to 10, MBPS. 
right? Approximately. Probably I would say it's going to be less than it. So you can say like, I could have assumed 50 bytes instead of 500 bytes also, right? So it's okay. I would say probably you should go ahead and optimize this and say that probably it will just take 50 bytes for me to send a thought to your life. Is that okay? Now coming to the memory estimates. Right, so we've already talked about the storage which we've used, right? So this storage was basically used for DB, right? So what is uh, like how much DB capacity you will need, right? For memory estimates, you think of that, like we talked about whenever we're looking at the read heavy system, we thought about DBs and cache. So we've talked about DBs, what is the storage for DBs? Now we're gonna talk about what is the storage for cache itself, right? So we'll do the same calculation where uh, in general, what people do is there's an NT20 rule, right? Which says that 80% of the traffic comes from 20% of like, of people like of usages or users or something like this, right? Whatever is, is in concern, right? In this case, it would be 20% of URLs. So you're saying is that like there is gonna be some hot URLs, and those hot URLs are gonna be used more as compared to everything else in the system itself. So 20% of the traffic or 20% of the URLs are, is gonna generate 80% of your traffic. That's the and this is something called as 80-20 rule, and this is used widely across uh, a lot of different stuff itself, right? So now using this, uh, we can try to basically think of uh, how many uh, like how many requests are, are like twenty percent of the total number of requests which we'll have, right? So can we think of this in this form? So twenty k is the total number of reads which are happening into uh, like if I want to calculate it for a day, it would be something close to this, right? So 20K reads is happening, which is to, into 24 hours into 360 seconds, right? Like I have the, uh, like this comes up to like close to be like 1 billion, 1.7 uh, billion per day, right? Now, the reason for converting into day is that uh, I would want to like have the expiration for cash, like for any key in the cash, I want to have the expiration as one day. Itself. So what I want to do is I want to calculate the capacity of the cache which I need to have. So in that case, I would basically look at what is the storage I need for cache caching these URLs for one day itself. So how many number of URLs I need to cache into what is the size of one URL uh, into like what, what is needed for one day itself, right? Because I want to have the expedition time of uh, like one day for the, these URLs itself. Okay. So that's the reason we're converting it to like uh, a day back. So this is like 1.7 billion per day is the number of uh, like reads request you get. Now, if you think of this, I need to only store 20% of these into my cache, right? So basically it would be uh, 0. What the hell? Where is my... This is going to be 20%, so 0 0.2 into 1.7 billion into how many bytes are we using? 500 bytes are we using, right? So this is going to be our capacity per day. So this comes up to be close to like 5 to 10 is 10. So this gets, this gets okay. This gets canceled. Now we have 1.7 into, so 1.7 into 10 to the, what the hell? Why is this happening? Into 10 to the power. Three, no, sorry, 10 to the part two, right? So this is gone, uh, this and this is gone. So 100, yeah, this is gonna be like 170. Uh, this is billion, so this is gonna be something like 170 GB. Yeah, so this is gonna be something like this, right? For one day, I would need 170 GB per day. Right. And because I'm having expiration of one day for these URLs, this is what, this is the capacity I need. Right. So at any point uh, of time, I would like, 
like for storing one day, like for storing all the data in one day in a cache, I would need this much of storage, right? And because I would definitely have a TTL to all my cache keys or all the keys which I'm caching, this is going to be fine, right? So this is the storage, uh, like this is the memory needed for uh, storing in the cache. Is this clear? Any doubts on the calculation? So I did like uh, 170 GB per day, we can store in uh, cache, yeah. like uh, it will be probably a distributed cache, right? Because single system cache cannot. Yeah, this. I mean, we, you can assume to have like a mem cache or something in this case. But I mean, it, it's okay if you don't want to talk about like what exactly, what cache are you going to use? You can just say like it, it would be a distributed package. Is this fine? Okay, now let's try to do one thing. I think I'm running out of space on this one. Ah, there's no space. Let me, uh, let me use this, provide. Okay. So we have done all the capacity estimations and we'll just write the rough numbers here. So I don't want to go back to that particular thing. So I'll have like, I'll say estimates. I'll have the rough numbers here. The numbers are uh, new URLs, which is around uh, 200 per second. Uh, redirections, which is 20K per second. Uh, incoming data or incoming bandwidth or incoming like incoming bandwidth BW I'll just say like bandwidth is uh 100 kbps outgoing bandwidth is uh 10 mbps storage for like basically this is a db storage so i will say it's what we call db storage is 15 tb cache storage is 170 gb okay this is fine now let's jump into the next section which is uh Next session would be API design. So can somebody tell me what would be the API design, like what are different APIs which you're gonna have? Anybody? One should be for create the URL. Okay, yeah, right. So there would be a create URL API, which would look like something like this, right? So I would say, so, okay, sorry. We should not write it like this. It should be something like this. So, post call to slash URLs. I'll, I'll keep like these small. So we're posting on this URL and then you have something like this, right? So uh, you can have like, I would say API dev key which is basically like a user ID, right? So instead of this, you can assume to have like a user ID from the input or something like this. I'm, I'm, it's totally fine, whatever you want to choose. If you're given them dev keys, probably you will use dev keys and stuff like that. Or you can say user ID. So I would say slash user ID. Right. Uh, the next thing would be, you will have a, I would say original URL. Uh, you'll take in something like, uh, if there's an alias, you'll probably take an alias for this. Or you would have like an expiration, expiration time or date, whatever you want to call this, right? So that is how a create URL will, will look like for you, right? Uh, so Ajit, uh, this expiration time is need to pass or uh, we will uh, automatically assign the expiration time? And That's also not. why we need this API dev key. Yeah. So think of this, like we talked about the user notion, right? So is it like, is the URL tied to a user or is it not tied to a user, right? So this 
because we have not decided upfront that whether uh, you would have users in the system or not you have users in the system if you have users in the system probably while creating a url you would want to assign it to a user or something like this right so there are two ways in which people do it so stuff like this either you take the user id or you take you give them some api key or something like this which can be used to basically identify the user itself right so you can use any one of those okay okay so like now coming back to the second piece which is expiration time so expiration time you can assign in two ways one is you default so you have a max cap default saying that five years is the max time which i will store it but if somebody comes and says that i would not need it for five years i just need it for seven days then you should respect that right i mean it's it's a good feature to build in to this case right so in that case you just have an expiration date expiration time which is an optional field so this would be an optional field right if they pass in you respect that if they're not probably defaulted to five years okay is this clear okay so now this is a request and then we have the response right so the response would basically have something like a short url right we basically give the short url back there's nothing else which is there okay uh now probably this is the right time to discuss this right uh create should be fine right create is just this okay is this is this clear the next api which you can have is uh to basically delete url i mean you can have this case where you would allow people to delete the url itself right so if somebody like if you're using a notion of a user or stuff like that you can do this right so in this case it would be the api would look like delete slash uh urls slash the short url right and you will probably take in like you if you want extra information you can pass this through header or through uh like the body but i would say probably passing through the header seems to be a better option so you would basically pass in this uh if i dp or uh, user id okay any doubts okay now moving on to the third part uh, basically there would be the last part would be basically to redirect urls so while redirecting urls uh, you you what you do is uh, you have a call to this particular url so there would be a get call to this urls slash short url right and in this case what you give back is basically you give back the response with the like your response is to like actually the response is a bit different in this case what we'll do is instead of giving back like a body response you can use 301 status code i mean along with your response right so basically what you're doing is you're redirecting basically you're redirecting uh, the, the so you get a request and you redirect it basically saying that okay you should redirect to this particular uh, way so basically you send back the short url response like basically the long url so you can think of this as your sending the long url back for the original url back and then in this case you are giving like the response code for this is 301 we specify that okay we where it the client understands that basically they are trying to redirect it to this particular url itself right i mean uh, if you want to look at this this is how it will be they would there's a client there's a server so and this uh you basically have you put in a short url is this uh it gives a response back with 301 status code you get this url and you basically the client would redirect to the original url i mean probably this might go to a different place altogether right so it might be a original url okay is this clear right uh now this just one good interesting conversation which you can have around this is should we use a 301 status code or 
should we use a 302 status code? Right. So 301 is permanent redirect. Which means that the browser would cache this response. And the next time when you give the short URL, they would not try to uh, call your uh, server like to figure out what, what the actual long URL is. What it will do is it will catch on their side and they would basically use the response which they already got, right? In this case, the long URL which you sent back, they will, they're going to catch it and like they're going to use that information. So 301 is like a permanent redirect and the browsers or the clients are built in to basically use that going forward. So going forward, any calls to the short URL would be basically redirected directly without contacting your uh, server to get the information in the end, right? In 302, it's a temporary Redirect, which basically means that, yeah, at this point of time, use this information, but going forward, if you want to, again, use this URL, we'll have to contact the server back to understand this, right? So basically the client would not ca cache the response in this case, right? So if you're not doing any kind of stats or stuff like that, then probably using this is okay, because it saves your, uh, I would say it will save uh, a few hits from the server. So if the same person, again, wants to, if the same person or the same client, again, wants to redirect to the particular uh, like short URL, they would probably like not, not contact the server at all. So this helps you in mitigating some of the load of your system, right? Uh, if you're doing some analytics and stuff like that, you would want the exact numbers of how many times a URL is be, like being used and stuff like that. In that case, in, the, in that case, probably you would want to use a T02 as such. Okay, is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. Yeah. Now just now just coming to the uh, the other part, which is basically like the uh, DB schema. I would say DB schema. Uh, like for URLs, it would look like something like this, right? So you will have a hash or a short URL, and you can keep this as a primary key. So then you'll have an original URL. Then uh, you have things like expiration time. So these two are, uh, I would say, str strings. This is also a string. This is a date, uh, I would say time, probably not a date, date time, like probably a date and time, right? Then you have uh, like, if you have user information, then you have to use right. So, and you can have another thing, which is like, when was this created? So you have a creation time, which is again gonna be a, what happened? It's gonna be a date time. Okay. This can be, uh, I would say it depends on what system you're using. This can be a, the time being is let's consider it to be a string itself. Okay. Now, if you are having users user in the system, then you will have another table called as users, which will have stems like user ID. If you're using API dev key, probably you can have like you can have this also in the system. If you are, I mean, people can say that you can have multiple dev keys and stuff like that, but because this this is not focus on those stuff, we'll, we'll keep this to as low as possible. So you can have this or you cannot have this depending on how you want to build out the system. You would have something like an email because if you are trying to like register user, you need all of this information. And then you can have something like a creation time. When was the user view? This could be a string. Uh, this is also gonna be a string. This is a string and this is a date time. Okay. So this is how my schema would look like. Any doubts? Mm, any doubts on this? I mean, can we move ahead? Okay. Now the big piece. How, what is the algorithm which you'll use to do this? Or how would you convert it? Like, how? What is the algorithm in which you are able to generate the short URLs? 
I know you guys might have like read this up or like been familiar with this, right? So let's quickly uh, try to use the most common one which people use, right? So anybody who wants to take a shot at this? Come on, everybody would have done this, right? I mean, I'm assuming you would have asked, you have been asked this question in interviews also. This is the yeah. most, most famous question in interviews, right? So, yeah, like some hashing algorithm we would use, um, which would uh, like MD5 hashing or some other um, string generator, which would generate string of specified length. Okay. okay. So, like, let's look at the options. Like one is MD5 hash or SHA one or like the uh, like some hashing algorithm, right? So say hashing algorithm, right? The other would be a uh, custom string generator of a particular length, right? Okay. So in this case, let's try to take one approach and assuming that uh, we are fine with uh, using SHA some alg SHA algorithms or MD5 algorithms itself. Let's think of this. How would you actually do this, right? So you have an original URL. Now you can do something like this, right? So original URL, you pass this to the hash function. So in this case, let's assume that we are using MD5. So you pass to like, you pass this original URL. And now at this point of time, I'll just say OU, which is original URL. So I pass to this MD5 algorithm, the original URL. Now MD5 would give me a uh, back uh, a string of a particular length, right? Anybody knows what the length of uh, MD5 hash is? 16 bits, oh, sorry, 16 bytes, mm, or 32? Uh, I think it's 128 bytes, bits, sorry. How many? 128. 128. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So this gives you 128 uh, bytes, sorry, bits, right? So this uh, algorithm, basically MD5 will give you 128 bits back, right? So now if you look at this, you're getting back 128 bits for each URL. No matter what the size is, you'll get something like this, right? So, okay, yeah, 16 bytes, right? Yeah, 16 bytes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you're getting 128 bits back, right? Now, let, we'll have to do another calculation, right? So if, uh, if we look back, uh, like what was the total number of, uh, like, do we have that number here? What is the total number of, uh, custom URLs we'd need to store? I think we, we had some, sorry, this is okay. Sorry. I'm probably I went too far. Okay, uh, I think we had, like, let me, let me just do this probably. Yeah, here. We had discussed, right, how many URLs which we need to have, right? Huh. So this was right. Uh, if you remember correctly, we had like 30 billion URLs, right, which you need to have. It is okay. Like, over a span of five years, this is the number of URLs we will need to store, right? We yeah. did the calculation, right? So we noticed that this is the total number of, uh, like, assuming that our system is, like, has expansion period of five years and so, right? this is the cap which we need, right? 30 billion URLs, right? So now what we're doing, going to do is, uh, we're going to look at how many, like, uh, like, what is the number of characters or, like, how many, like, what is the length of this short URL which you need to have, right? So now we're going to calculate the length of short URL. Right. So like how many characters do we need or something like this, right? So we need to do this, right? So uh, if you look at something like this, right? So most of the time people use some kind of encoding, right? Base64 encoding is the most common form of encoding which is out there, right? So what is Base64 encoding? Which basically means that uh, like you will use these characters to encode anything zero to nine, uh, A to Z, small A to Z, capital A to Z. And then I think you have this plus and 
slash as such, right? So, like multiple people would like give you multiple solutions on this. Some people say that use basic studio encoding, which basically means don't use both of these, or you can use both of these directly, right? Because I would say like basic studio encoding is already supported in a lot of libraries in the system. Probably you can go ahead and build that, like use it out directly. I'm not really sure that base 62 is uh, how common it is, right? But probably you'll have to build it out yourself. Okay, so we agree on like we'll be using base 64 encoding. So uh, now let's try to find out like for supporting 30 billion keys or 30 billion URLs, how many characters do we need, right? So assuming that we're using 64, and this is something which is already done, like, but I'll tell you how to do it this in, in this form, right? So, Ajit, uh, what is the need of base 64 encoding here? Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to shorten the, like shorten the URL out, right? So we're getting 128 bits. If you want to encode this, like it's, it's quite long, right? You will not be able to encode it like correctly. So if you use base 64 encoding, you're going to bring it down, right? So, okay. Uh, do you know what system do we use in day-to-day -day life? Like numeric system, which we use in day-to-day -day life, day -to -day life. What yeah. is it like actually named? Yeah. Can you tell me what's the name for it? Okay. So normally when you say hundred, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hundred, something like this, right? So uh, it is called as decimal system, right? Yes. Uh, do you know what, like, what does it actually mean? Okay, let's let's uh, like binary system, right? Yeah. To express this in some base. What would be the base for this, right? A any idea? Binary. What Two. is binary? Okay, this is good. Why? How did you say this? Because zero and one, there are two maximum things, right? Yes. Uh, in yeah. our in our case, what is our decimal system? Ten. Ten is a base. Ten is a base, right? We can, we can call it as base ten. Right? Yeah. Same thing. So if you think about this, if you, I'm expressing some decimal to a binary, like doesn't it like increase the number of bytes which I need to do it? Because I could say like here I could say zero. Sorry, what did I do? Okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five, something like this, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, I, I can go on, right? Something like this, right? In this case binary is zero. This is one. And this case it is zero, zero, sorry, one, zero. This is one, one. Like if I want to express this in certain forms, the length of this would increase, right? If I'm converting decimal to binary. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But if I want to use less number of characters, can I do the opposite way where I, I can use a big, like uh, if I increase base, base would be big then. Yeah. In that case, right? So if I'm using base 64, I'm, I'm basically trying to compress it down into less number of characters, right? So, I mean, uh, what does base 64 mean exactly is something like this, right? In base 64, if this was encoding, zero would mean zero, uh, nine would mean nine, and then uh, A would mean 10. I, I need to do the calculations further on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what slash is? will be 63. Ah, yeah, slash would be 63, right? So 63 uh, plus would be 62, right? So you can think about this, right? That this is decreasing the number of characters which I need to express this, right? So if I'm going to try to shorten this out something, this is a good way to shorten uh, uh, like a long lengthy character into something short, right? I'm not worried about uh, too much about understanding and stuff like that. I'm just trying to short it out, like using less number of URLs. I'm compressing it out. The reason for doing this is I want to express something large into something smaller. And you'd always want to use, like, suppose if I had a base of like, I don't know if I can do this or not, but if I had like a base of this, right? Now this, the size reduces a lot right? in that case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay uh, so now we're looking at how many keys do we need, right? So we need 30 billion is, is what the number which you need, right? So if you look into this, uh, because, so this is something like this, right? I mean, okay, sorry. I should probably not do it like this. I should say something like this, right? So how many letters or, uh, like what are different, uh, how, uh, like, how do I calculate how many, uh, like, what is the length of characters which you need, right? So you can think of this, right? If I had like only one character, I could support only 64, like 64 numbers, right? So 
I can say 64 or uh, different URLs I can store if I have only one character, right? So like if I have only, if I'm using only one, uh, I'm using the length of one to express this out, right? Uh, if I'm using one, only one letter, then I would be able to use 64, like different, uh, like I would be able to express 64 different URLs using this only one letter. Is this clear? I'm using base 64, right? So as you, as you can see this, right? Like, uh, I could say from zero to slash, I'm, I'm able to like express 64 of these, right? Only yeah. So if I'm having, uh, if I'm using only one letter, then I'm, uh, I'm able to only store like 64 of these, right? I'm able to express 64 of these, like 64 different permutations of this, right? If I'm using, uh, uh, like I'm using uh, like a letter of length two, then I'm able to do it into 64 into 64, right? If you go back to your permutation thing, this is how it works, right? So I would be able to do something like 64 to the power two. I don't know what the number is, but it is going to be something like this, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find what is the right fit of this number being a bit greater than this, right? Or what is the next greater number than this? And that would be the number of uh, like the length of the characters which I need, right? Sorry, I mean, why did I write seven? Did you get my point? Do you understand how we're calculating this? Okay. Okay. So, so, okay. so minimum, minimum number of base 64 places so that we can accommodate 30 billion records. Yes, exactly. So I'm, I'm basically trying like 64, not very, sorry, ah, 64 to the power X, assuming this X is the length, right? So I'm saying this equation would look something like this 64 to the power X where, uh, it should be greater than just greater than, uh, or equal to 30 billion is what I'm looking at. Right. So the smallest value of X, which satisfies this condition is going to be the length. Right. Because I'm like one, one speed, like one, uh, one character or one, uh, if I say, uh, one character, I could score 64. Right. So in the second character, I also can score 64 in the third, I can do 64 as well. Right. So it's basically the, the way you can, uh, calculate permutations or different permutations altogether. Right. So if I, if I'm able to like build out a equation like this, so 64 to the power X or the smallest value of X, which satisfies this equation, where this is just greater than 30 billion is going to be my length of characters. And if you do the calculation, it comes out to be six. So X is equal to six, which is like 64 to the power six is, I think it's equal to something like 67.8 billion or something like this, right? Five is smaller than 30 billion. So we are going to pick six. So X is six, which basically means that, uh, the, we need to use six letter to express our short year. Any, any, I know this is, uh, this is something which might take time to understand, but like, do you understand this? Are we able to understand this uh, in this form? Like, are we able to like grasp how did we come to like how many letters do we need? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anybody else yes. has, has any doubts? Anybody, Ashraf? Is it clear? Okay. So now we know that we need six characters, basically six letters to basically express the sort URL, right? But uh, MD5 would give me 128 bits, right? Right? If 128 bits, like, uh, like if, if in, in order, or like if you think about this, uh, base 64, so base 64 is from zero to 63, right? Which is uh, basically like two to the power, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 32, six. Yeah. Two to the power six, right? So basically you need, uh, like you are expressing, uh, like, uh, okay. How do I put this across? Right. So basically you need, uh, six bits or you say, you can, we can say something like this, right? We are compressing six bits into like 
one character. Let me say this. So if I was using, so if I'm doing a binary to base 64, right? So this is two to the power six and this is two to the power one, right? So I can say that uh, something like this, right? So I'm able to basically express six characters or uh, like six bits in uh, using one character, uh, one letter itself, right? Is it clear or is it not clear? I think I did not explain this. Properly. Yeah, this uh, is not clear. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, this is tricky, but what are you saying that uh, six different binary representations can be stored within one single unit of storage unit of base 64? Exactly. So uh, in, in base 64, we could go from zero to this, right? 63. We are clear on this, right? So if you have to express this in bits, how many bits would you need to express this? Like, uh, how many bits are required to express 64 different uh, possible options? Uh, six bits. Mm. Right, two to the power six, right? So you need six bits. Mm. Uh, like, I would say, it, it's very hard to like, <laughs> like use words for this, but like, <laughs> you get the point, right? So six bits is what, uh, so six bits in binary. Okay, let me think it like this. Six bits in binary. Uh, is equal to like one uh, length of one in basic uh, 64, right? It is clear. So you can say that six bit, which I is using in binary for the same representation, I would use one uh, one bit or I don't know what I should call it, but one letter for basically expressing it in base 64. Is, is this clear now? Yeah, one unit here, then you would have this for six bit seven. Yeah, exactly. So, MD5 has 128 bits, right? So if, uh, how, like, how long would be my, like, how would I represent this in B64? Like, what would be the length? It would be 120, 128 by 6. six. Right, so this is 2 to the power uh, uh, 64, 2 to the power 7 by, sorry. Sorry, I, I should not do all of this, right? So it's 128 by 6, right? Which is 21 point something or something like this, right? 21 characters or something like this, right? This is okay. 21 characters, I would need to express uh, 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 like MD5 of like 128 bits, right? So MD5 will give me 120 bits, bits long uh, hash value. Now I would, if, if I want to like completely convert that into base 64, I would get 21 like characters out of this, right? Is this clear? Uh, shouldn't, shouldn't we take the ceiling instead of floor value, 22? Okay, fine. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's the thing, right? Now what I need to do is, I'm saying that we only need six, like if you remember, we'd only need only six letters, right? Uh, uh, we did this, right? We only need six letters. Right? Right. So what we need to do is we just need to come up with a way in which out of this 22 characters, we pick up six characters. Okay. Is this okay? Now that's up to you. You can do something like this. We, uh, I will take a prefix of like, so zero to, uh, five. Like I would pick up like zero to five from the beginning or from the end or from the middle, or I would just keep it random where I can, I, I'll generate just 22 characters and I'll, I'll use something to get it from middle or something like this, right? Do, do you get my point? Like if I'm using MD5 hash and I'm base 64 encoding it, I get 22 characters. Now the problem is, I mean, the 22 characters I cannot use because I, I mean, I want to keep the short as short as possible, right? So I come to the conclusion that I only need six letters to express this. So now out of 26, sorry, out of 22, I want to convert it to six. And you can do this by basically uh, using, I would say, like you can use different forms of things, right? You could do something like, I, I would pick up the first six letters or the last six letters or somebody from in, in the middle, or I would do randomize something to do that, right? Right, you, you can choose whatever you want in this case. Like, 
you can i mean it's fine the only thing which you'll have to do is uh there might be cases because you're not picking up all the 22 ones you there might be cases that you'll get collisions so which basically means that uh like because if you're using a strategy it might be that it would still collide with something else so when it collides with something else or if you get the same url probably you'll get the same mp5 hash out of it right so in order to uh, like uh, reduce the collision you could do stuff like this right so instead of directly using the url you can use url plus user id if you have the user id itself and then do the mp5 hash for it and then you pick up like from the 22 characters pick up the six characters itself right but at any point of time you can assume that there would be some collision of some sort right you will never be able to like uh, uh, say that it is not going to have collision so you will have to have a collision uh, like mechanism where you would do retries just to create another unique url out of this some people say use this url plus a uh, auto or a uh, increment number and stuff like that right so you can use any any form which you want to the only thing which you need to be careful is by testing is you should have some strategy in mind that even if this has a collision how would you deal with this so i would say like if this has a collision then i what i would do is uh, so first of all my way of uh, picking uh, like six characters out of 22 characters would be i would basically do something like i would not do like from like so suppose it is 22 i would not say like pick the first six characters or pick the last six characters i would say random it would basically be random from any character to any character it can pick. But I'm trying to do MD5 hash on this. So more or less the chance of collision reduces. If it's still, uh, like if the collision still happens, what I would do is I would just uh, build a retry. So in this case, because I'm choosing the, the uh, like the first index and the last index, or I will choose the first index randomly. Think of this, I'm choosing a first index randomly where the index might be from zero to 15. Yeah, it would be from zero to 15. So I'm saying key, Pick a random number from zero to fifteen, and uh, like then use that to basically uh, like get all the characters which I want, right? Or I'm saying like use that, right? And I'm doing it on top of URL plus uh, URL plus user ID. So if for some reason it generates uh, uh, like I get the six characters which are not unique or which is already present in a DB itself. Now I will again call this function. This function would give me a different uh, or because I'm using random index, so it will give me a different index altogether, right? It, and if that ran, like till, I mean, you have like a lot of possibilities there, right? So you might get collision in one, probably getting collision in all these 16 options might be a. Hey guys, sorry. Uh, you understand the strategy which I'm trying to use here? It, it might still have collisions, but my way of collision resolution would be that you go ahead and retry this. And because I'm using randomized, like, like I'm using a random, uh, I'll, basically I'm using random index, right? So in this case, it might happen that the next in, so this time the first in the first uh, instance I get an index four, probably it had a collision. The next time I would def, like the chances of getting the index uh, like four exactly is quite less. So I'll probably get five. And when I use it five index, probably I'll I'll get a different uh, like character altogether. That that might be unique in that sense. So I mean you can think of other ways in which you can do this, but I would say like I, I would prefer something like this because I feel uh, this is quite simple to build out and I could design it in an interview itself. So. Okay, is this clear? So I guess like uh, when a collision occurs, like we would be uh, trying to regenerate the hmm. hash again, or uh, or we are picking the suppose at the first time we took uh, first six characters, and if collision happens, we would pick the next six characters. Is it like that? You, you, I mean, it's totally up to you. How do you want to put it up, right? So think of this, right? So there's a function called as generate hash. I'm just giving a random name, right? So it just takes a URL and user ID, suppose. In this case, what I do is I do MD5 of URL plus user ID. I like get random index. This is a function call which gives me from between zero to fifty. I'm saying it gives me an index, and I do like a concatenation of this value which I got. Like let's call it h h of uh, this index is i. So I say h of i and i plus six. Suppose if I do something like this, right? And then I basically check whether you need. So basically, it's like a DB call. I mean, you, you can use a different stuff, right? Yeah. If you want to uh, be smart, you can use a bloom printer here where the bloom printer stores all the unique URLs which is present in the database. 
then but again the problem is when the expiration happens how do you deal with removing fields and blue, blue filter and stuff like that so stay away from it uh, but yeah so check whether this string is unique uh, which basically does or, or you could say like try to write to db write to db ah try write to db because you have a primary key constraint on this uh, this is the i would say short url if it fails then you need this like okay you go back and basically like you can have this in a loop and go ahead and do this right so you can have a while loop here itself till you are not successful or this you don't return back and when you successful you return back with the short url return you get my point then uh, get random index what parameters we have passed uh, it's basically like from 0 to 15 right so i mean i was just taking a strategy where i said like uh, if it is 22 characters long what is the initial index which i can have zero index and then the last index which i can have is 15 index right so i'm trying to get like any index in between and from there i will pick up the next six characters i mean it's totally up to you you can use something else the, the, i mean i'm just proposing something it might not be the best and somebody else might come up with something else this okay? I think this should be 16. How we got? Uh, I zero got zero. the connection. Yeah. 0 to 15. Okay. So, Nico, uh, we'll have this index from 0 to 21, right? 22 characters, if you have 22 characters, right? Now, if I want to pick up like 16 characters, sorry, 6 characters, I could do like 0 to five, right? Or one, two, six, right? So the last one would be like, so starting index is zero and the last index would be 15, right? 15, say 21, I can get it, right? So I'm saying that I'm randomized this, that saying that give me the starting index, random starting index itself, which would be in between zero to 15. Okay. okay. Right? Like, I mean, uh, I would say like, you can use it, like you can use different, like, you can, you can also randomize this by saying that, uh, uh, Give me the index and then give me like whether you want to like uh like left to right or right to left and stuff like that. You can do a lot of stuff later around if you want to play around with this. But yeah, the problem is no matter what you you'll have to have a collision resolution. So you'll want to have a for loop or something like this. Okay. Is this okay? And uh, this 21, uh, this 22 bytes we have got from. Uh, no, no. So this is not to, it's like, this, if you remember, uh, we said like when we do MD5, like when we do MD5, we get 22 characters, right? Okay. Out of those 22 characters, I just need to select six characters, right? Okay. So that's it. Like, that's the strategy I'm using to basically select six characters. You can use anything which you want. I want and until this, you can reason it out that it will have less number of correlations, then it, till that point, it's, it's completely fine. Okay, is this okay? Uh, Ashraf, any doubt? Uh, no. Okay, let's quickly try to wrap this up. Okay. Uh, the next thing would be caching. So if you think about this caching, what, I mean, you can use different strategy for caching. One thing would be, it will have LRU. So like most probably we said that we need 170 GBs of cache. So the closest one, which people generally get is 256 GB of cache, right? So you will use a, uh, like any cluster or something, which supports 256 GB of cache. Okay. And that's going to be fine. You can use a distributed cache if you want. Okay. Now, uh, if you look into this, uh, what you will do is, uh, um, how would like, uh, the caching mechanism, which we can use at this point of time is something like, uh, until you get a read. So you are basically using, uh, what is the term? I just generally forget this caching, like exact term for this. The one in which you don't store anything till you get the first read. So in the first read, you will store, uh, first read, you basically look into the cache. You don't find that thing in the cache. Uh, you look into DB, you get the value out. Uh, while giving the response back, you also cache it out and use that. Uh, I think it's called as write around cache, right? So we would use a write around cache. And I mean, uh, this is fine until uh, the only thing which you need to be careful about is, uh, the expiration thing of this cache should be lower or you should be careful that, uh, while writing out the expiration for this, you should, it should never be a case in which, uh, the data in the DB is actually expired. 
but in the cache, it is not expired, right? Because you probably are going to surf from the cache first and then hit the DB. So you just need to be careful about that thing that while you're caching, probably you need to make sure that you should choose the seal of one day or the expiration, whatever is lowest, you should use that. Is this clear? Seeding of float. Sorry. I mean, whatever is the smallest, I would say, the lowest, I think. Okay, I, I am getting a bit confused there, but like, I would just say like, uh, if when you're selecting the expiration time, you should select uh, like, if I select one day or the expiration time. So suppose for example, today's, uh, today's expiry is about to happen at uh, 3 p.m., right? So if I cache it for one day, probably, I, if I put this into cache, I'll have that edge case where after 3 p.m. though it was supposed to expire, but it is not expired. So I should be careful about those use cases. Do not mess around with this. Okay. Is this clear? Like let, let us quickly look at uh, how this uh, like how would uh, the system look like basically a HLD diagram for this. So there would be a client, right? So there, there might be multiple clients. So this in clients is this. Uh, we have a load balancer in the middle and this is the server load balancer. So all the requests will go to this load balancer. And we, behind this, we have a cluster of servers. So we have multiple servers. We, we can have like one DB. We can use a NoSQL DB, something like, uh, I would say uh, you can use a Dynamo DB or like a key value store, or if you want to use something like a Cassandra, which is the support three DB system, you can do that. So the request would go into this, and then you'll have a cache. So I have a cache. Wait, so this is a cache. So all the requests actually, like I should do something like this. All the requests should actually go to the cache first. So the request goes to the cache first. If the if there's a cache miss, then it goes to the server. And a server would fetch the values from there and basically write to cache. So this is read and this is write to cache. Right? And uh, if you find like uh, if you find the data here itself there, you return back the data from this place itself. Right? So I'll say this is only happen if there's a miss in this case, right? The server uh, I mean, in the server, you can do this, uh, this whole thing of uh, encoding. You can choose, uh, like, sorry. you can choose to use another server for doing the encoding, or you want to use the same server for encoding. I don't see much uses of like having another server itself. We can do the server itself in this case itself, okay? And then there might be cases uh, in which, uh, like first looking into the cache and then trying to do a read, you will find that, uh, okay, uh, the request is itself not there itself. Or you can do something like this, right? Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, this, this, uh, yeah. This uh, reading from cache is for uh, getting the, like, the, after the URL is sorted, we are trying to get the original URL. Right? Yes, like, yes. Suppose we are trying to create the short. Huh. Then so, yeah, one second, I'll, I'll just show you reads and writes. Probably you'll have like, you'll have to show it in a different way altogether. So there's a cache. I think the request first goes to the server itself. The server would get you choose to first call the cache. So they would choose the, like call the cache. And then if you get a miss, right? So if you get a miss, I mean, you'll get a response, right? Based on this response, you would basically uh, try to call the DB or you will not try to call the DB. I'm, I'm doing drawing it a different way altogether. I don't know how it's, it's going to look like for you guys, but yeah. Okay. It's really bad. How do I rotate this? I have no clue, but uh, we'll, we'll probably look into this later because this is a client. This is the load balancer. So I'm talking about reads right now. We'll talk about writes later. So in reads, what happens? A uh, client gives a request. Uh, the request goes to the server. The server will first look in the cache. If it finds the response, it will basically return from there. If it, just, if it finds that the cache does not have data, then it will hit the DB find the data, it will, uh, like at the same point of time, it will return back the response to the uh, client as well as cache it. So it will basically do a write also at this point of time, right? Hey, 
it will do a write to this and uh, yeah so this is how the read would look like is this clear this is for a read so basically in read what you do is you you first look into the cache uh, for the data if you find it in the cache you use that value in the cache and uh, like use that uh, data itself you don't call a db if you don't find if you if you find a cache mess then you try to call the db and it, it might happen that the url is, is also not in the db itself then you send an error response or if you find a response or uh, if you find that particular sort url in the db you like fetch that uh, you send back a response you also write it to the cache at that point is it okay Uh, okay. In the case of writes, if you think about this, the same thing will happen when you write to this. Basically, what it will do is in writes the caches are not involved uh, involved at all. So I'm 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 using a write around cache strategy. I mean, you can choose if if you want to not use that or use a different one. I'm I'm just saying is one way of using this, right? So uh, I'll write to the uh, like I'll first have a write request. I basically go to the server. I do the encoding process, right? So. i'll call the i mean it, it can be a like you, the same server could also support encoding of the url itself right so you don't need to have a different server all together so it will support and like you'll do the encoding bit there and after doing the encoding bit you you basically have a interaction of db also right so when you try to store all this if you get an error then probably uh, you again try this at outens other stuff but you store it in a db and you give a response back just like you give a response back itself the cache is not involved at this point of time so i'm trying to like use a Write around cache strategy where the first call, like the first call or the first read call, will always have a cache miss, and then it will work properly itself, right? So we can choose if you want to do it differently. Probably if you want to write a write it to the cache itself while insertion or while uh, creating the URL, so we can do all of those things. But yeah, I mean, it does not make. I I think in a database system, if I'm just uh, like trying to like, uh, I would say uh, lazy load it till the point I need it. I think it's going to be fine. Right. You probably. Uh, I mean, I I just drew. I did not draw this properly. Probably you can have a better interaction where you can say, uh, like you can mention all the different uh, like touch points where say like uh, when you're trying to do a read, uh, read a short URL and you get a response back for a short URL and things like that. Right. So you can probably represent this diagram better. But yeah, I mean, for the sake of it, this is how it's gonna look like. I can probably have like better names in the arrows and stuff like that when you bring it into view. So. Is it okay? Any questions? Okay, I'm just coming to this because in caching we are having expiration period, so you don't need to worry about this. The thing would would be that you would always have a time to live with uh, all the keys. So either it would be a one day or it would be like if the expiration is less than one day, then probably you'll use that. Uh, for uh, DB cleanup. There are different ways in which people suggest this to do this. Some people, it depends on the choice of DB which you have. For example, if I'm using something like a MongoDB or DynamoDB or certain things like that, you already have a TTL for each piece. They support TTL out of the box. So in that case, you don't need to do anything. You can have expiration like the expiration which you want to have is actually the expiration of that particular thing. In Mongo, there's something called as uh, TTL indices, indices which you can use if you want to do expiration and other stuff. The same thing is supported by most of the NoSQL databases. I'm not checked for all, but I think like that could be a strategy which you can use directly there, right? So you don't need to worry about. It. The, the next thing is, uh, if you look at the DB storage, we're using around 15 TB of data. So now the question would be around, uh, what kind of? Excuse me. Uh, do you need to do partitioning or things like that? Uh, I was looking into this. I like I feel uh, if you if you're using NoSQL DB, uh, probably you don't need to do uh, like you don't need to do partitioning at your level itself. What you can do is you can do sharding, so you can have a big cluster, or yeah, you can have a cluster which has multiple number of nodes itself, and you can do sharding. And on the sharding key itself, like you can choose uh like the first character of the short URL to be your sharding uh like uh like like the shard key which you use right or the sharding strategy which you use right can like have like a hash algorithm or you can use the first character or you can do multiple of those things. The only thing is you just need to be aware of this that uh you should not have like a like the uh. Like the hot usage problem, right? Or hot shard problem should not be there in itself. Right? So, what is the strategy which you're using? Try to make it a bit like I would say use a hash algorithm itself, and uh, I think you would be good uh, 
to use that, right? So initial URL which you're trying to store, uh, you use a hash algorithm on top of the short URL to choose which uh, instance it gets to get like which instance it gets stored in or which shard does it get stored in, right? Not instance, but basically shard itself. So in that case, uh, you are saved. You you have saved yourself from that uh, problem where you can like you are manually choosing something and that uh, particular character might become a or that particular uh, shard you have chosen might become a like uh, like a case where uh, it is creating hot shards, self right or skewed shards. Okay, so yeah. Uh, about analytics and other stuff, uh, if there's a requirement, then you can choose to use some like a time series database or some other database, or depending on what kind of analytics we are looking for, you can also have like those kinds of databases attached to it. And uh, whenever we are doing a write uh, or sorry, whenever you're doing a read, you can probably also have like something written to that particular DB itself, right? So you can just have like a URL, uh, the URL and the count or something like this, right? So for each day, you maintain all of those stuff. Or you can, like, if you don't want to do even those kind of stuff, you can just say that, okay, whenever access happens in a particular way, you're just having the key and you are putting out, like, okay, at this point or at this time, this key was access. You're just putting those values and then you can have run a lot of aggregations and other stuff on top of this. If you need it. So, I mean, if somebody asks you about analytics, and stuff, okay, uh, any doubts on this part? Like, any doubts on the overall, uh, how do you design this? Like, anything which just we need more clarity on. Anybody? Uh, uh, no doubts uh, till now, but uh, I will try just to, I will try to make the logic myself. Mm -hmm. I will make one binary. Uh, so that I can uh, do all this uh, shortening of URL myself. I will I, try to implement I, that. I would do, I would, I would say one thing. This logic which I had, right? This was like very simple. You can write a code for this. Yeah, this is what uh, huh. I want to do. Yeah, you can just write a code for this. I, I think probably I, mean, I would have run this in Python itself. I'll, or I'll probably see if, if I get time drop, I'll write this code and share with you in Python itself. Right? So you can just do that and you can probably see. Uh, it and you can run experiments in all of this. Well, what is the collision? Like right? yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, that's it for this question. I think this was an interesting question. I know everybody has like, solved this, but I think a lot of times when I ask people about this, uh, Actually, I've screwed this up in an interview itself where I was not able to understand why I'm using six bits. How did I come to six bits and stuff like this? So I had the problem, and this was way back, but like I had the same problem, same question, same problem I had, and I was not able to like I was not able to make the interviewer understand that what was the reasoning behind using six uh, characters and how did I arrive to this? Right. So obviously, because we read stuff, we don't like we don't think uh, exactly like how did you come to this? Right. So. I think that now it should be better than that. I try to explain exactly why do you need six actors or something. So, so that's why Ajit, I feel that uh, it will be more clear if I try to implement it myself. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I think this gives you like a the self you understand the concepts around and yes, yes, what happens also, right? So I, I think it any way is good, right? So I would say uh, think about this, right? Uh, like try to do this uh, for the same number, right? For probably numbers like hundred or two hundred. Try to write up like encoded in binary, encoded in decimal, uh, decimal is okay, <laughs> encoded in base 64, encoded in base 32, like let's try it out and see like what is happening with the length, what is the length happening, what is happening to the length and how does it correlate and stuff like that, right? So it will probably help yeah. you understand it. Yeah, earlier what uh, I knew about base 64 encoding that this is used to convert the binary data to like the readable characters. This yeah. is what I knew about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can use it in different forms, right? So, you know, okay. what is the readable character here? The readable character here is basically the space of characters which you're using, right? Zero to nine, e to yeah, z, yes. v, and plus and slash, right? That's the readable character, yes. right? So, it's fine, right? That might be one of the uses, right? Where you want to convert binary to something. This might also be a use case where you say, like, I have a big data, I want to, or I have a long string of characters, I want to compress it out. I have a decimal, and I want to compress it out, right? You can, you can compress a decimal, right? Also, so if I say hundred. 
uh, if you, if you look at this, hundred would be represented would be represented in two two uh, like two characters letter, right? A letter of two characters, right? In base sixty four, right? Decimal hundred number can be represented in uh, like base sixty four by using only two characters. So it also gives me like the capacity of like decimal. I had three characters or right one zero zero, but I could represent that in two in uh, base sixty four. So like you can do this compression also. Like, yeah, you want to yeah. Do stuff. I think if you play around this, you would understand this better. I mean, this is also something yeah. which I have to do it to understand it completely, right? So I think now I have this clarity where I will not mess this up anymore. So I think once you do it yourself, right, you would probably be like more clear. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.